Alrighty, well, good morning, everybody. Um, well, this or time once again for my pseudo cast, and um, and for those that don't know what I mean by or what I mean by a pseudo cast, it's not quite a podcast. Um, this isn't being live streamed or anything like that. It's not like a radio program or anything like that. This is just gonna be me talking, um, talking about various stuff for like 15 minutes or so. So, and um. And I'm also having a can of uh, V8 Energy, peach mango flavored. So. Yeah, I actually remember to say it at the start of the cast this time, and not somewhere in the middle. It's you know, like somewhere in the middle after I finally remember to say it. So. And today's selection, um, eight hours of birds singing on the lake shore and water sounds. You know, uh, Mount Shucks in Washington. I'm not a I'm not a fan of these kind of I'm not a fan of these kind of videos. I'm only going with these now, it's just because I'm out of options. Um, normally, I would much rather show like a, a people watching video, but those are very few and far between. Um, leaving my only uh, leaving my only other alternative being a uh, uh, walking down the street kind of videos, which I'm not a real big fan of those either. I like them more than the than the uh, scenic videos here. But, but not, not, you know, but not, not that much. You know, not enough for me to want to keep on doing them. So, I mean, stuff like this has been done to death. I mean, the shit's everywhere. They're all over the place, you know, in movies, books, and whatnot. So, it's, again, I'm, I'm sick of seeing stuff like this. I mean, unless I'm actually there. Then it might be a different story, but I mean, I'm, this is just a YouTube video right here, so I couldn't give two shits about it. But, but anyway. Okay, so, but um, otherwise, I didn't really do a whole lot. I think um. I uploaded a couple of videos that basically took up most of the night. Just, and you know, and for those for those that don't know, um, making and uploading these videos is an extremely long process. I'm not even actually editing them anymore, and even then, they they still take a while. Basically, if um, if a vi if a video I make lasts about an hour then it's, it takes about the same amount of time just to upload it. Like if I made a 60 minute video, it's gonna take about an hour just to upload it. That doesn't include the uh, processing period. Usually that can take about, I'd probably say about half that time. Like again, if I, made, if I uploaded a one hour video, it'll probably take about a half an hour just to process. So. So yeah, it takes a very long time. It's also one of the reasons why, why I like to, I like to keep these videos around 15 minutes. That way, so um, if this, if this is a pretty big file size, with the kind of videos I'm showing, like, like this one here, it'll probably uh, it'll probably shoot up the file size. I'd like to keep it down to a manageable level, so where it's not taking me all morning just to get it all squared away and stuff. So. So yeah, but anyway, um, I made and uploaded a couple of videos that took most of the night. I was gonna make a third one. I talked about this yesterday. Um, there was a video called "A Love Letter to Fighting Games." I wanted to do commentary on that one, but by the time um, by the time I finished up my second one, I just kind of fizzled out because I still had a third one to make yet. I this one here, the pseudo cast. So. Like, but like I said, I, I kind of after uh, after I made my second one, I just I just kind of petered out. It just wasn't really into it. So, but otherwise, um, also like yesterday, uh, I played a little bit of pinball, FX3. Um, you know, I I beat um uh, I beat one of my high scores on um, I think it was five minute mode, on Medieval Madness. It's like a it's a pretty popular table in real life, but yeah, I I beat my high score in five minute mode. 
but otherwise, the rest of the session, I sucked ass. Um, but yeah, I also, um, and I watched, um, uh, episode four of Dragon Ball. Surprisingly, it wasn't that perverted. You know, unlike the, um, unlike the first three, they're, they're, they're they got some pretty, they got some, uh, they got some naughty parts in them. Like, they were, they really, um, uh, some of that stuff in there was borderline rated R. It's supposed to be a rated PG program, but not always. Yeah, again, surprisingly, episode four wasn't that perverted at all. I think there was like um there was like one scene where where like the main main bad guy is motorboating some imaginary girl, but I mean not not really not really enough to warrant me going <gasps> or anything like that. Just I mean it only it only lasted for like a moment or two. That looks like a TV antenna over there. Like maybe there's a house buried back behind these trees. Now that is that is one cool thing I I really love seeing. Like if um if I'm if I'm driving around like kind of in the country when you're seeing like a bunch you're seeing a bunch of hills or a bunch of tree covered hills. It's really cool that sometimes you can see like chimneys sticking out from amongst the trees. Like there's like a there like there's like a house buried buried within within those trees. I mean, that's kind of cool. I mean, that's freaking cool as hell to see, but again, aside from that, scenes like this, I don't really get into. To me now, they're just boring. And as on, on a related yet unrelated note, um, I've got kind of a, I have a unique, I have this uh, unique like of uh, Bob Ross, legendary painter. Um, the stuff he paints, Basically shit like this. I don't the stuff he paint the stuff he paints I don't care for. It's just landscape shit. I mean I'm I've seen that stuff most for most of my life. I mean so it's done it's been done to death. But uh the re I mean the main reason I watch it though is just because of who he is and how he does it. You know, it's not it's not what he paints that I like, it's how he paints it. And again, it's it's him as a person as well. So, so yeah. But like I said, that I've got a, I've got a unique love of him. Like lot, most, most other Bob Ross fans, love his paintings. Oh my God, they're so beautiful. They're so scenic. I don't give two shits about them. I mean, again, I, it's stuff I've seen before. Ooh, clouds floating over a mountain. Yeah. Oh wow, never seen that before. Yeah, haven't seen that. Yeah. I haven't seen that at all in my 49-year existence. Oh no, sir! Totally new to me, you know. So I, I but again, the con, the actual content, I don't care for. So, but yeah, we're. But again, most everybody else, most other Bob Ross fans, they love everything about him, including the, the tired old scenes he paints. So, you know, maybe if he. Maybe if he drew a, if he drew a dead body floating down the river or something like that, he, yeah, that'd be pretty interesting to look at. You know, I mean, some, you know, just something you don't see every day. You know, or maybe you know some, you know, maybe somebody hanging themselves in the woods or something. I mean, you know, that, if you drew something like that, damn, that's a, wow, that looks pretty wicked. I mean, that's definitely something you don't, that's definitely something you don't see painted every day. I mean, no, no, it's not not that I'm a fan of people hanging themselves. It's just, again, you know, something to break up the scenic monotony of all this. And and sorry to sound like a broken record, but just to reiterate, the only reason I'm I'm playing videos like this is because I I'm out of options. I can't for various reasons. I can't really show the stuff that I really want to show, like people watching. Oh, and I forgot to mention earlier too, I don't like I don't like to repeat a video. 
I don't like showing the same video twice. Much the same as uh, when I stream pinball, or hell, when I just play pinball in general, I don't like playing the same table twice. I don't like playing the same table twice in the same session. You know, I mean, and I'm, and I'm like that with real in real life, too. For the rare time that, would, that uh, I actually visit a pinball arcade in real life, I don't and unless I, unless I have a really good reason for doing so, I don't play the same table twice. Usually, if I'm playing pinball in real life, I'm, quote unquote, making the rounds. I'll play a table once. When, it, when it's game over, I go to the next table and play it. And when it's game over there, I go to the next one. Um, the only exception is, is these days, because the bowling alley that has all these pinball tables... Usually, with um, two tables that I can think of, um, I think of um, Captain Fantastic and Ted Nugent, all the rest of the tables, you have to pay at least two quarters for one credit. And some of these old tables have that too. You got to pay 50 cents, even if they're uh, old wooden box tables. I mean, one table there, Monster Bash, you got to pay... I think it's either a buck and a half or, or two bucks and quarters for one credit. So, yeah, I find that to be kind of bullshitty. So, but I mean, but uh, otherwise, other, but, uh, hang on, I'm kind of babbling here. But, uh, ideally, I don't want to play, I don't want to play the same table twice, but due to circumstances, again, Captain Fantastic and Ted Nugent being two of these examples, I'll play those tables more than once because... They only cost one quarter. I mean, they don't cost two quarters, and they sure as hell don't cost no eight quarters either. So, so yeah, in those situations, I'll play those more than once. But um, uh, but as far as that uh, video that I that I was gonna do commentary on, a love letter to fighting games, um, I'll probably hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> if I can try to do a commentary video on that one, on that one video, a love letter to fighting games tomorrow. But if, if, if I got time. So. But uh, for those, for those that weren't around for yesterday's cast, the video I'm talking about was the, a love letter to fighting games. It's basically just a video extolling the virtues of how great fighting games are and stuff, which was uh, totally, uh, which was totally not my experience back in the 90s like when I was playing them or when I was actually for lack of a better word consistently playing them I mean the my uh, my first few experiences on those fighting games I was basically bullied off of them you know not very good at them I struggled against the computer and um basically is these Basically, these predatorial pros kind of took advantage of that, went in, you know, saw me struggling against the computer, popped their quarters in, and proceeded to beat the living hell out of me. Worse than what the computer was doing. You know, like doing their master pull 50% or 50 plus percent combos on me, you know, basically leaving me with no chance whatsoever. Shit like that just caused me to go to go play other stuff like pinball or, or in this one, in this one arcade, Time Killers. It seems to be, I guess it's like the most critically panned fighting game out there. So I went right to that table. I went right to that game, Time Killers. Nobody touched, you know, nobody touched that one. So that was kind of my sanctuary game. But anyway, getting back to what I was saying. My experiences with fighting games was pretty much totally different from everybody else's. Apparently everybody else had these great, wonderful bonding experiences. You know, totally learning experiences. They're all... The community was so supportive of them. I mean, or let me let me let me let me rephrase it. The the FGC 
which is short for the fighting game community. Um, the fight, the FGC as we know it today, didn't really exist back in the 90s when I was consi consistently playing uh, fighting games in arcades. Um, back then, or at least at least in my neck of the woods, um, or I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I forgot to say this earlier, but. For those that have seen my other, have, or for those that have listened to my other cast, I'm about to repeat myself here. So, just a heads up. Um. But anyway, um. But in the the FGC, as we know it today, didn't exist back in my time. Again, back in the '90s. You know, back in the '90s when fighting games were basically fresh and brand new. Um. The first the first fighting game that really took root was uh, Street Fighter 2. That came out in like 1990 or 1991, and yes, there was a there was a big crowd of people around this uh, grand opening, ar you know, arcade that had its grand opening. Yeah, there was a big crowd of people around Street Fighter 2. And with few exceptions, all of them were playing Ryu and Ken. That's it. Ken and Ryu. You know, I think at least 90% of all the players are picking Ken and Ryu, the same exact two characters that you could play on the first Street Fighter. You know, so I'm like, boring. I mean, this is pissing me off, too. You know, Ken and Ryu, and then Ryu and Ryu, and then Ken and Ken, and then back to Ken and Ryu, and then somebody else would play a different character. But that character would get its ass, would get its ass beat because no one's ever played that new character before. But after that, it was back to Ken and Ryu again. But anyway, um... But anyway, going back, so again, there wasn't much of an FGC back around my time. All it was was just a whole collection of individuals waiting their turn. Or I should say, a whole collection of individuals putting their quarters up on top of the cabinet and then waiting their turn. That was, that's about as FGC as it got back then. And again, this was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I think Broken Arrow, Oklahoma as well. This wasn't over in the West Coast, you know, NorCal, SoCal, and all that. The, this wasn't over in the East Coast either, you know, New York, and I think New Jersey, or that Chinatown Fair Arcade over there. I mean, I mean, it wasn't over there either. This was like right smack in the middle of the Bible Belt, you know, Tulsa and Broken Arrow. So, so yeah, the again and again the uh, the scene for lack of a better word, was, again, was just a whole bunch of, was just a whole bunch of individual people playing King of the Hill. So, they did, we, there, there wasn't this friendly, wonderful, you know, worldwide group hug that we, you know, that we know and love today. You know, it was, again, it was just every man for himself back in, you know, back in the 90s. But any, anyway, anyway, um, to bring everybody back to my original point, um, uh, but after this, uh, watch, watching this video though, and I'm, I'm realizing that my experiences were totally different than that, so this is what I was going to make my commentary video on. But again, I had already made two, so I was pretty much burned out at that point, and I still, I still had yet to make a third one, which is the pseudocast. So. But alrighty, um, as uh, I'm a little, as it's almost 20 minutes now, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it good here. I I've, I've said pretty much all the things that I wanted to say. So. So yeah. Um. But otherwise, hey, thanks for uh, tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And um, I. Sh should be able to do another one at least tomorrow morning and it will be my last one for the week because my work week will have started up on Wednesday but until then thanks again for coming by everybody and see you all next time <laughs>